Good afternoon. I'm Aaron Lebo, the Vice President of Communications and Public Affairs. Uh, welcome to today's special town hall about our vaccination policy and the developments that we're taking. Uh, we have a series of presentations lined up today, so we'll follow our normal for, uh, format. Our presenters uh, are available for questions uh, throughout uh, their presentation, so I would encourage you to use uh, the Q&A function uh, throughout the course of today to, to pose your questions. Uh, would ask that you do try today please to use uh, your name associated with a question rather than as an anonymous attendee two reasons for that one is we have limited time today uh, only 30 minutes so we want to make sure that any questions that remain uh, unanswered by the end of our webinar get a response uh, so if we have your name then we have your email and it's a lot easier to do that and also just to ensure a respectful dialogue around the issues that we're talking about today uh, which we've been fortunate to have so far so that'll help us ensure that and we'll also be able to get uh, get you good answers uh, to anything that doesn't get responded to in the course of our webinar. So please ask questions using your name uh, and we'll do our best to answer as many as possible in writing. And we'll pause at the end of our presentations to also offer a live Q&A uh, as we have in past. But we do have 30 minutes today and we have a series of presenters. So we're going to get rolling. Um, I'll kick things over to our president and CEO first, uh, Rob McIsaac to open things up. So Rob, over to you. Yeah, um, thanks, Aaron. And as is our custom, I'll just note that um, <clears throat> at the outset of this meeting, we are privileged to provide care on lands that Indigenous peoples have called home uh, for thousands of years. And HHS is uh, also um, committed to creating an environment where everybody uh, feels that they belong, uh, notwithstanding um, you know, where they come from or how they identify. So um, I'll move on to uh, my regular uh, remarks. So good morning and uh, thanks all for uh, joining this special town hall. The purpose of today's town hall uh, is to bring everybody up to speed with where we're at on our va employee vaccination policy uh, and also where we're headed. Many of you uh, are aware, I'm sure, that on September 1st, we implemented a policy whereby all HHS staff and physicians were required to report their COVID-19 vaccination status. And this included a requirement for those who are unvaccinated to submit to education and regular testing. As of October the 5th, 97% of staff and physicians have reported their vaccine status in compliance with our policy. Um, and I'll say that the vast majority of those reporting uh, are vaccinated. So for all those who have done what's required under our current policy, um, I wanna say thank you. Unfortunately, uh, some workers are not in compliance with this policy. Uh, and we've been clear that people who do not report their vaccination status would be subject to disciplinary action. So those disciplinary measures are being rolled out this week. Uh, they include unpaid leaves of absence uh, progressing through to uh, dismissal. I wanna say um, it is regrettable that we need to do this. However, the fact that 97% of our workforce has responded appropriately uh, to me speaks volumes. We have provided ample time and support for staff and physicians to report their vaccination status. This is an appropriate and reasonable start to our appro approach towards vaccinations. Frankly, there is no excuse for not having complied or for not bringing yourself into compliance immediately if you haven't complied. <clears throat> Today, we are also taking the next step in our approach to ensuring a safe hospital and workplace through vaccination. Effective November 30, HHS will require all staff and physicians to be fully vaccinated against COVID-19. There will be very few uh, exceptions that will apply to this rule. And we've discussed them before. This development is consistent with the direction I have been communicating at our town halls for several weeks. It's also in line with many of our peers in the province. I wanna say uh, the end of November is a very generous deadline that provides a final opportunity 
for the unvaccinated or partially vaccinated to receive one or both vaccine doses, uh, including the required waiting period of 14 days post-vaccination. Beyond November 30, disciplinary measures up to and including dismissal will apply for those who have failed to meet this requirement. Once again, I want to emphasize it gives us no pleasure to have to invoke these measures, but we are committed to this approach and believe strongly it is the appropriate way forward. I know there are many reasons people haven't gotten the vaccine. If you've simply been procrastinating, the time is up, the time is now uh, for you to get your vaccine. If you're hesitant about the risks, we can set you up with experts in this field who can provide you uh, with the reassurances and the facts required uh, to overcome that hesitancy. If you're relying on some manufactured and frankly simplistic legal argument about your individual right to work for a hospital while unvaccinated, you need to stop being so self-absorbed and start thinking about your duty to our patients, to your fellow workers, and to our community. We have an obligation to uphold the highest standards of performance for the preservation of health and well-being. Each of us working here and those we serve deserve nothing less. This is the foundation and rationale for why we are taking these steps today. Having said all of that, I'm now going to ask Michelle LaRue to share details on our vaccine management policy, including our move towards mandatory vaccination. Michelle? Thank you, Rob. And I'm joined here today by my colleague, Tiffany Roblin. So we're going to uh, take turns working through the slides to uh, give you a fulsome update. So thank you, Tiffany, for joining me. Um, so first, the vaccine management policy. So this is where we are now. We've talked to you about this at numerous town halls before, so much of this won't be uh, new information for you, but where we are is of this week. So as of October 5th, we had 97% of our staff and physicians reporting, and of those, 92% fully vaccinated. So that means about 689 or 5% of employees and physicians remain unvaccinated actually was able to get an update this morning. Uh, there's a, a large group working on this initiative and the numbers actually come down. So still around the 5% mark, but we're closer to 680 unvaccinated. So we are seeing progress every day. So thank you to all of you who have reported who are vaccinated and who are taking the steps to do so. Um, and a reminder that we do have that vaccine email. If you're having challenges with reporting, uh, please don't hesitate to, to reach out. I've heard such great feedback from people who've contacted and talked to our EHS team around the support that they've been able to provide as you work through the system uh, to make sure that you are compliant with our policy and the directive. If you're not fully vaccinated, if you're, if you're part of that 5%, um, you do need to complete education sessions and self-testing twice weekly. The audits are underway. We significantly increased the amount of auditing, so please do so. Be ready when we reach out to you. Watch your emails so that when you're contacted, you can provide that proof in a very timely fashion. We spoke at, at detail on prior town halls about the exemptions, medical, religious, and creed. It's an extremely narrow amount of exemptions. Uh, you're seeing that, you know, it's on the, in the papers in our other hospitals, we're seeing that. But if you do um, wish to submit an exemption, you do need to follow our process. So please go to the hub and submit accordingly so that they can be uh, reviewed. And just a reminder before I turn it over to Tiffany for her part, our goal remains 100% vaccination. We said that consistently and we're strong, strongly driving towards it. So I'll be back to share more shortly, but Tiffany, over to you. Thanks, Michelle. As Rob mentioned at the start of today's session, we are well underway to begin to enforce compliance with our current vaccination management policy. This includes not only your obligation to report your vaccination status, but also compliance with the education module and testing requirements for all those who are not fully vaccinated. HR and your leaders have spent a number of weeks now working with individuals to ensure their compliance with the current policy, both through one-on-one -on -one discussions, emails, and mailed letters. This week, we have begun to take those disciplinary steps to ensure compliance with our policy. 
folks who remain non-compliant will be issued unpaid suspensions until the point in time they do demonstrate compliance with the policy. If required, discipline, as Rob mentioned, will progress up to the point of dismissal. To better understand our rollout of compliance, uh, we are working through some pockets um, of the organization, and as you can appreciate, will take us some time. If we could go to the next slide, Leslie. Um, the prioritization at this point focuses on those individuals who have outright refused to report their status under the policy, whether to their leader or to members of our senior leadership team, and those are being addressed accordingly. We're also ensuring compliance through the auditing of testing requirements, and we'll begin to meet with all active individuals who have otherwise failed to report their vaccination status to date. For folks who may continue to experience issues reporting your vaccination status, that email address Michelle just mentioned is on the screen for you. So please do email vaccine at hhsc.ca for support. Uh, with that, I will turn it back over to Michelle to speak a bit more uh, about the ma mandatory vaccination policy that Rob mentioned. Thank you, Tiffany. So uh, as we move on to mandatory vaccination, as we've said consistently, our goal is 100% fully vaccinated for our staff and physicians, and we are moving there on November 30th. So uh, Rob said it's, it's a significant amount of time. You've got almost two full months uh, before that effective date. This gives all of our unvaccinated, our partially vaccinated time and uh, staff and physicians enough time to receive both first or second doses um, as is required. And again, my understanding is that uh, there's quite a bit of availability. You can still reach out. There's all kinds of resources on our hub um, and to find out where you can go and get your vaccine if you haven't done so already. Next slide, please. So what does this mean? And you're gonna see a ton of documents released on the hub. We're already working on them, FAQs, uh, information, timelines to help you understand how we go from here to there by November 30th. So please stay tuned. There'll be all kinds of uh, information coming your way over the next couple of weeks. So what does this mean for you as we as we move towards November 30th? So if you are unvaccinated, what this means is you must get your first dose by October 19th in order to meet the timeline. If you do not proceed to get to become fully vaccinated by our November 30th deadline on December 1st, we will have to take the steps necessary to ensure compliance at the, with our new policy up into the point of dismissal if required. Again, this is not about um, the processes that we have to undertake for compliance. This is about becoming fully vaccinated. And I hope that's the message you take away, that that is, that is what this is about today. The importance to our patients, to our colleagues uh, of being fully vaccinated and, and doing this. So first dose by October 19th, second dose by November 16th, and compliant by November 30th, a great little uh, arrow chart here. So thanks to our team for pulling that together. Next slide. So um, you can't, you know, open your laptop or your iPad without hearing about other organizations going in this direction. Uh, you know, the long term care, we just recently heard about the provincial mandate. Within the hospital sector, every day there's someone else moving in this direction and so many who've been moving to mandatory retirement already. We've got UHM, who's been in the newspaper many times, uh, started this work in the summer, Ottawa, Hotel Dieu, Sick Kids, Chio, Blue Review. And many of you would have, I think, read in the Hamilton Spectator, I think last night, that St. Joe's also, um, our hospital in Hamilton is going the same direction to mandatory vaccination by November. So again, we're in a lot of good company. I was just recently on a call and almost every hospital that I heard was either there or on their way there. Our educational sector, our partners, uh, McMaster, Mohawk, the school boards, so many already again um, moving towards or already at mandatory vaccination. And all of us who've had the pleasure of going to a restaurant or a movie knows that we need to show that proof of, of, of being fully vaccinated when we go out to, to sit in a restaurant with our family or friends as we can. Okay, next slide. You know, as I mentioned, we're going to have so much material for you. Uh, available over the upcoming weeks. But right now we just start, thought we'd start by showing some of the City of Hamilton resources that are available to you. So uh, there's all, if you have questions, you can go to the Hamilton Public Health Services. 
Rob spoke earlier about how we're, uh, we're pulling together a group of experts within HHS who can support some of your questions if uh, you still have something outstanding as you move to become fully vaccinated by our November 30th deadline. Visit the webpage that's linked here for videos, a Q&A. There's all kinds of very reliable and helpful information here. Um, we've got an email that you can see about the vaccine confidence team that you can use. And as I mentioned earlier, if you are not vaccinated yet, there's all kinds of clinic, clinic locations and times in Hamilton. And if you're not from Hamilton, um, there's many in all of the other towns uh, that surround us too, where you can go. Uh, and with that, I think I will pause and turn it back over to you, Aaron. Okay, uh, thanks very much to all our presenters today. I know uh, everybody has been busy answering questions I did ask at the top for those that maybe didn't hear, uh, it'd be really wonderful today, given our constrained timelines, if you could pose questions using your name uh, rather than anonymously helps us to get um, an answer to you. Uh, should we not have time to answer your question today? Uh, if we have your name, we have your email. Um, anyways, uh, we'll proceed. We also had the opportunity for people to ask a question live. I see we have one attendee, uh, Greg Usk, with a hand up. I'll come back to you, Greg, just uh, in a moment, because I know occasionally people do raise their hand um, in error. So just to make sure that you do have a question and you'll receive a prompt uh, to unmute and then you can ask your question live. I guess I um, would encourage everyone to look at what's been already answered, up to 24 questions answered in the Q&A function covering a wide range of topics. I want to pick uh, a couple of those that I think are important. One was around the impact uh, on our staffing levels as we proceed to implement progressive disciplinary measures. I know Kirsten typed an answer, but maybe I know Rob, Michelle, we've talked a lot about that. Uh, maybe you wanna offer some off the top comments uh, about how we're going to try and manage that. I know we are talking about a very, very small fraction of our employees, but what will be the thought process in terms of managing staffing levels, which I know are under strain? I can go first and then if Rob wants to jump in. Um, so we are very thoughtful. We understand the HHR limitations and uh, what our workforce is already uh, going through uh, to support our patients. But again, these are mandatory policies that we're putting in place and every organization is going through the same thing. So we're being thoughtful. We're doing everything we can to support the timeline. That's why you see that extensive timeline to be able to be compliant. That's why there's been so much communication, so much outreach from our leaders to staff and physicians, uh, support from HR, and now this uh, group of experts within the field for within HHS to support. So we're doing the best we can to minimize that impact on operations, but again, ensuring that we do need to be compliant with our policy. Yeah, that's great, Michelle. Rob, I see you've come on camera. Did you want to add to that? Yeah, I'll just say we'll be, of course, we'll be prudent about how we move forward in implementing the policy. Uh, I do stay in touch with uh, my colleagues in other hospitals. And uh, so uh, there's no doubt that you can maintain continuity of operations uh, while enforcing a mandatory vaccination policy. And that's been borne out uh, in other hospitals in the province. Okay, thanks. And I know uh, Kirsten added to the answer in the Q&A, so you can review that there, uh, team, as well. So Greg, I see, I think it's Greg Usk uh, still has a hand up, so I'm going to go to you now, Greg. Uh, you'll get a prompt and you can unmute and ask your question, so please go ahead. Okay, uh, try that one more time. Okay, I'll come back to you again then. Uh, in the interest of time, I'll keep moving. Uh, you should get a prompt uh, and then you'll be able to unmute and ask your question. So I'll come back to you in a moment. Another question that came up a couple of times, uh, and I think is an interesting one, is related to what if we move to mandatory vaccination, our workforce is vaccinated, what will be the implications for PPE use uh, moving forward of that? I don't know, Dr. Mertz or Dr. Smale, I think one of you typed an answer to that question, if maybe you could give us some sense of will PPE and distancing still be required in our spaces if we have an entirely vaccinated workforce? Yeah, I think I, I typed a, uh, an answer along those lines. So there's, there's all the guidelines out there as you're aware, and there's certain expectations from the Ministry of Labour as well. 
these may change along the way, but there's nothing magic with November 30th in terms of us changing the PPE requirements. We need to have an eye on what's happening outside of our institution and what the guidelines and mm -hmm. interpretations also by the ministries will be, and then go from there. I hear you. We've heard uh, many people asking about when may, may we be able to, to drop eye protection. We aren't there yet, but we hope to move into that, into that direction for sure. Understood. Thank you. So uh, I'll come back to Greg. I don't, I think, Greg, I see that you're unmuted. Are you with us? No, so I'm muted, but we're not getting audio. Um, anyways, I, I don't want to, maybe if you type your question into the Q&A, uh, we'll make sure it gets answered. Just uh, highlight your name so we know that it's you and I'll, and I'll pick up on that. Um, okay, another question about uh, the exemption process. I know that there's very limited exemptions for people uh, who might want to follow that pathway. I don't know if one of my HR colleagues can give us a sense of like, what's the timeline uh, for that? If somebody, in, given these deadlines, um, are some in the queue now? Would someone expect a response uh, very quickly to a proposed exemption? Uh, what, what's happening right now in that regard? Well, I'll start. Um, you know, again, I was just on a call with some other hospitals about this, and they are a lengthy process to review. Uh, most importantly, making sure that, again, the appropriate documentation is submitted first is the first step in following our processes. So they do take some time. But I think Susan and Tiffany might be better to one of you to speak to the length of the process um, that it's taking. Maybe start with you, Susan. Hi, sorry. Um, yeah, so any of the medical exemptions that are coming through, uh, the religious exemptions are also coming through EHS. So. Um, we are doing our best to go through those uh, in a timely manner. The um, medical exemptions do go to our occupational health physicians, so there is a, a little bit of uh, time that is needed to review those submissions, um, but we are able to respond back to people within, uh, I, I would say, seven to ten days. Um, and in some of those cases, Again, uh, the, the criteria is very well defined for medical exemptions. So there is a requirement for an allergist if it's allergy related, um, and not just from the family physician. So we have accepted some on a temporary basis, uh, giving the individual ample time to um, get that uh, additional medical submitted to us. Great stuff. Okay, thank you both uh, for those responses. Another. A question I have for the group is around uh, the application of this. There was a couple of categories that came up in our Q&A. Does this apply uh, to workers who might currently be working uh, remotely, uh, which I believe the case is yes, which is a, is a workforce-wide policy. Perhaps uh, if someone wanted to comment uh, in addition on the rationale for that. Uh, I mean, everybody's a valued member of the team. Patty, I see you've come on camera. Did you want to uh, offer some thoughts? So. Well, individuals are working remotely currently and may continue to in the future. Post pandemic restrictions, the expectation will not be that you never come on site. So we will have meetings as teams with remote workers. Often a number of remote workers will still support clinical programs, which would require you to go into the hospital. And in order to be safe, for all of our patients and staff, everyone is required to get vaccinated, regardless of if you work from home or not. And again, working from home or working remotely is not a condition of your employment. Um, you may be required to work on site at any time, and you are required to be vaccinated. Amazing. Okay, thank you. And I think for those that are currently on a leave of absence uh, for, um, say, a maternity leave or, or otherwise, what's the expectation of them uh, at this time in relation to this November 30th uh, deadline. So Aaron, I'll comment as it relates right now to reporting and I think more information coming around how to relate to the November 30th uh, deadline around mandatory vaccination. But as far as reporting, you know, we've asked and we've had a, a lot of people reach out to us well on leave and say, I'm doing it anyway, thanks for the process, I'm, I'm going to uh, report now. So thank you for doing that. But we are asking at this time for the focus to be those who um, are currently at work. And as you return and are scheduled to return, 
you would need to have that reporting done in advance of that return date. Um, and again, we'll, we'll give more information about how that might look for the fully vaccination date as we move towards it. Gotcha. Um, another question, or I think it's been raised a couple of times. Again, this one might be best for Dr. Mertz or Dr. Smail. It's the question of, uh, would I need to get vaccinated if I've already had COVID? Like, what's the situation there with natural antibodies versus vaccination? Uh, can you give some comment on why vaccination is still the superior approach and why, uh, how we should be thinking about that? Um, I, I think I answered this question um, in the Q&A as well. Um, natural immunity is very variable and um, not predictive or predictable enough for our vaccine um, uh, policy. And so while there is natural immunity, we cannot rely on it in a, um, a consistent way. I have to reinforce the fact that vaccination after natural immunity is safe and very effective. Active. Wonderful. Okay. And it, I guess, you know, in terms of uh, all, this is nothing new in our workforce, right? The, the requirement for vaccination uh, for other uh, diseases is already in place. I don't know if maybe uh, one of our doctors or perhaps one of our leaders could comment on the fact that this is now an extension of a pre existing uh, approach we've been taking to keep a safe workplace. Which may be posing the question a little differently, uh, which pre-existing conditions are we already receiving vaccination for that are important to maintain out of our workplace? Dr. Smale, I see you again, thank you. Uh, yes, yeah, so um, as, as you mentioned, we do have a very robust um, vaccination policy that looks at um, evidence of immunity to chickenpox, mumps, um, um, measles, which is very contagious. We also require evidence of um, tuberculin skin testing in our, um, uh, in our um, workforce. So as you mentioned, this is part of the routine onboarding and follow-up um, that is required for all um, healthcare workers. Wonderful, thank you. And, uh, and by doing that, of course, we're protecting both ourselves and our patients against all of these transmissible infectious diseases um, of which COVID is one. Exactly, yeah, that's great. Um, I do, we are at time. I do wanna point out um, there is the opportunity to ask questions using the HHS news at hhsc.ca inbox. Uh, there are also uh, a very robust set of resources available on the hub uh, around this matter, around vaccination, around our new uh, approach to our mandatory vaccination policy, the timelines involved and all the content you heard today. Uh, as always, we will circulate the recording of today's town hall so that you can review the contents after the fact and share uh, with your colleagues. Uh, and we'll appreciate uh, everybody's uh, involvement uh, answering questions and, and participating in our next town hall. Uh, and um, with that, I'll bring it to a close. Uh, Rob, maybe over to you for final remarks. Yeah, thanks very much, Aaron, and thanks all for uh, being here today and for all the, uh, the questions and answers. Uh, lots of, uh, in addition to people who I'm sure are unhappy with uh, today, I think, um, there are lots of people putting in comments that uh, they're very supportive of this move forward. Um, again, I would just emphasize this is very much about uh, our collective responsibility to our patients, to each other, and to our community. Um, that this is a, an argument that's that's really about our duties uh, to each other, as opposed to uh, our reliance on, um, you know. Um, alleged rights. So uh, thank you all uh, for, for those who have gotten vaccinated. Thank you all for taking that responsibility seriously. Uh, for those who are unvaccinated, I hope uh, you're listening carefully to all of the Q's and A's today and uh, uh, proceed uh, uh, to achieve compliance with um, our policy. Thanks all and uh, hope you have a good rest of the day.